Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So happy Chinese New Year or happy Lunar New Year if you're celebrating that part time of the year. I've just come back from a lovely trip and I wanted to share uh, a new AI research tool called SciSpace with you. So if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about SciSpace, then please keep on watching. Okay, so let me just move myself out of the way. I'm always looking for research AI tools because I like to see the research. And I like to have links to research papers to validate any claims. And I always like to investigate the research. And in this particular case, it's the performance of AI detection tools. So, so many people ask me in my travels, what is the AI detection tool that I use? And so I just wanted to share this research. So this question actually says, how accurate are AI based plagiarism detection tools in distinguishing between original and plagiarized content? Okay. Okay, so um, I have the free version of SciSpace. I'm still trying to decide which research AI tool I should subscribe to because I've used up pretty much of my all my free usage for all of the tools such as Consensus, Research Rabbit, Site, and now I'm on SciSpace. But I'm gonna have to commit to one of these research tools because I wanna be able to see the papers. So let's have a look. So this is only giving me the top five papers because I'm on the free version. And it says AI based plagiarism detection tools exhibit varying degrees of accuracy in distinguishing between original and plagiarized content, particularly in the context of AI generated text. Recent studies indicate that while some tools demonstrate high reliability, others struggle significantly, especially when faced with sophisticated paraphrasing techniques. Of course, we want students to use AI to brainstorm and we want them to go to, through the iterative process of using an AI tool to help them refine their ideas. But when our students go through sophisticated paraphrasing, it's actually very difficult for AI detectors to detect that. So here is something about Turnitin, which I've heard a lot about. Turnitin claims 98% confidence levels in detecting AI generated content. However, this is a study in 2024, just last year, studies suggest its accuracy may be overstated, particularly with text modified by AI tools like ChatGPT. And then we've got GPT-0 and copy links. These tools have shown higher reliability in differentiation between human and AI generated text, although they still require thorough validation. So perhaps those schools that are using AI detectors, that is just one tiny data point in the whole picture because we'd also want to talk to the students, guide them, teach them about academic integrity and honesty. And then here it's got Coolbot, Hive Moderation and Zero GPT reported 100% accuracy in detecting AI content, but failed to identify AI signs in original text. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Limitations and challenges. Let me just press read more. Okay. Many detection tools struggle with texts that have been paraphrased multiple times, leading to undetectable AI generated content. And it's very rare that a student would just copy and paste their particular output uh, as soon as they put in their prompt. It's likely that there's an iteration process and that the students are going to be paraphrasing many times. And the other thing that this says is the algorithms often lack the sophistication needed to adapt to evolving AI writing capabilities, resulting in potential false negatives. While AI detection tools are essential for maintaining academic integrity, their current limitations necessitate ongoing research and development to enhance their accuracy and reliability. But I would say, let's not go down that rabbit hole. Let's not use detectors at all. And let's try and teach our students about academic honesty and integrity. And let's really value the process of learning rather than the product. So on SciSpace, you can also see that it's got the link to the papers and you can interact with them. Um, you can create or add columns. So if too long didn't read, you can add the conclusions. Maybe I'll just add that actually. Let me just add the conclusions to the five papers. I'm very tempted actually to subscribe to this one. So it's got summarized abstract. Uh, I can add a column which has got the results as well. Uh, and then the five papers, if I move myself over here, examining the accuracy of AI detection software. 
And basically it says, the research found that AI detection tools, including Turnitin, failed to accurately identify AI generated text in their final iterations, indicating significant limitations in the algorithms, okay? And then there's another one here, comparing AI detectors, evaluating performance and efficiency. And this one concluded, if we go to the summarized abstract, and this one, the paper evaluates AI detection tools performance, finding GPT-0 and copy links more reliable, um, while writer AI showed less sensitivity, but it emphasizes the need for thorough validation and cross-referencing. So, you know, if you are gonna use a detection tool, it's one small data point out of the entire picture. And then there's a few more studies. So I quite like SciSpace, how the layout. Um, if I just play around here, there's a library here where I've got my notebooks, let's see. I think in SciSpace I can uh, organize, my, uh, organize my research into folders, which is great. I've got um, chat with a PDF, upload the PDF here. It seems like it's quite comprehensive. And I know that SciSpace actually helps you write research. So it can actually help you paraphrase, it can generate the citation, find topics. There's an AI detector built in, but we know that of course they're not going to be very accurate. Uh, there's a Chrome extension, so I might try that Chrome extension, but let's have a look at the pricing so that you get an idea of what we get in terms of the pricing. So uh, I've got limited actions in the writer, limited chats, uh, limited literature review searches, okay, et cetera. I can add five columns in the literature review, limited paper summaries, but then for $12 a month, I get unlimited AI actions in writer, unlimited chats with papers and PDF, unlimited literature review searches, etc. And it looks like um, there's a lot more functionalities that you get, of course, with the premium. So I'm still deciding whether to do that. Let's go back to the home. And, and it looks like also if I scroll down, there's some popular topics, best for researchers, literature review, find topics, extract data. Are you a student? So you can have a paraphraser, AI detector for authors if you wanna publish your own research. Okay, so I think this website allows you to publish your own research. And then here are some of the papers that were added here this week. Now, is there anything else? We can use ChatGPT. There's an affiliate program, chat with PDF, a home. And if I go back here, I'm going to save this to my notebook. So I'm gonna save it, let me move myself over. And this is to do with AI detectors. I'm gonna have a look at AI detectors because I have a feeling that I'll be coming back to this. Okay, and I've saved it. Okay, and it says unlock for the references. Okay, I'm still, I'm pretty tempted. So if I close that screen now, and I've added two columns here, summarize abstract and results, and then if I go to my library, I can see in my notebooks, I've actually got AI detectors as my first notebook. Okay, so I am tempted to subscribe to SciSpace. I've got to commit some time because I do so much research and I've pretty much used all the free versions of all of the research AI tools. I think this one's pretty good. I like the layout. I like how we can interact with it in different ways. I probably wouldn't use it to publish my own research, but I definitely use it to search for research papers. So for me at the moment, it's a toss up between SciSpace and Consensus. Let me know in the comments if you've had experience with either of those and which one you prefer, and that will help me make my decision. Thank you so much for joining me this week, and I hope to see you next time.